roses. Roses are widely misunderstood, and all I can say is that they're tough. Now, getting the, the flowers to uh, be beautiful, that's one thing, okay? But rose plants are very, very tough, and they're hard to kill, actually. They will keep coming back. And what I see a lot of times is just a tangly mess, and people are afraid to prune them, and they end up with this tangle of rose growth that's crisscrossing. You've got to get that and untangle it. And we're coming up soon. I wouldn't do roses this early. I would wait a little bit later. Wait till you get till April or so, later April, when it's starting to, to, to bud out. And really, if you're rejuvenate, rejuvenating a rose, this is what you want it to look like. You want to get it down to three or five stems, a chalice shape, outward pointing, okay? Get rid of the things that are crisscrossing across the middle. Get rid of the old gray canes. Make sure you get nice new green canes. And you can cut these pretty darn low if you don't have a lot of nice growth. Just cut it down really low, all the way down, and it will grow a new cane. The other thing you can do with roses is directional pruning, and that is these buds are very prominent on a rose. It's true on most plants, but it's really easy to see on a rose and make sure that you do a nice 45 degree cut to an outward facing bud. An outward facing bud is going to have that plant growing outward. If you cut it to the inside, that bud is going to crisscross. If you cut here, it's going to grow this way as opposed to growing this way. And that's going to end up with your tangly rose again. So go ahead and make sure you look at the buds, which way they're facing, and give yourself a nice cut with an outward facing bud. Roses can take time to recover from this type of pruning, so don't expect to have, you know, this great big vibrant rose in the first year. It's going to take two to three years to get them vibrant, but if you follow some techniques of thinning the rose, lowering the rose, and getting that healthy growth again, you will end up with a nice, beautiful rose bush in just a couple years. And if it's an heirloom type, an older type that's harder to find, that's very important. Okay. Obviously, there are so many new roses out there now. You can definitely get some beautiful types. But if you've got something that's uh, you know historic or sentimental, this is a great way to keep it going and to get it flowering again nicely. So when you look down on top of it, that's what you want to see: outward-facing buds, chalice, chalice shape, nothing going across the the center.
Roses. Roses are widely misunderstood, and all I can say is that they're tough. Now, getting the, the flowers to uh, be beautiful, that's one thing, okay? But rose plants are very, very tough, and they're hard to kill, actually. They will keep coming back. And what I see a lot of times is just a tangly mess, and people are afraid to prune them, and they end up with this tangle of rose growth that's crisscrossing. You've got to get that and untangle it. And we're coming up soon. I wouldn't do roses this early. I would wait a little bit later. Wait till you get till April or so, later April, when it's starting to, to, to bud out. And really, if you're rejuvenate, rejuvenating a rose, this is what you want it to look like. You want to get it down to three or five stems, a chalice shape, outward pointing, okay? Get rid of the things that are crisscrossing across the middle. Get rid of the old gray canes. Make sure you get nice new green canes. And you can cut these pretty darn low if you don't have a lot of nice growth. Just cut it down really low, all the way down, and it will grow a new cane. The other thing you can do with roses is directional pruning, and that is these buds are very prominent on a rose. It's true on most plants, but it's really easy to see on a rose. And make sure that you do a nice 45 degree cut to an outward facing bud. An outward facing bud is going to have that plant growing outward. If you cut it to the inside, that bud is going to crisscross. If you cut here, it's going to grow this way as opposed to growing this way. And that's going to end up with your tangly rose again. So go ahead and make sure you look at the buds, which way they're facing, and give yourself a nice cut with an outward facing bud. Roses can take time to recover from this type of pruning. So don't expect to have, you know, this great big vibrant rose in the first year. It's going to take two to three years to get them vibrant. But if you follow some techniques of thinning the rose, lowering the rose, and getting that healthy growth again, you will end up with a nice, beautiful rose bush in just a couple years. And if it's an heirloom type, an older type that's harder to find, that's very important. Okay. Obviously, there are so many new roses out there now. You can definitely get some beautiful types. But if you've got something that's, uh, you know, historic or sentimental, this is a great way to keep it going and to get it flowering again nicely. So when you look down on top of it, that's what you want to see. Outward facing buds, chalice, chalice shape, nothing going across the, the center. So what it takes to rejuvenate your garden. Uh, as I said before, you know, strong stomach, patience, because once you do this, you can't undo it. Once you cut the plants back, you're going to have to either pull them out or wait for them to grow back out. So it, it does help to have a strong stomach. What's in your garden? This is what you need to know before you start rejuvenating, that intelligent person's method, because don't try to rejuvenate plants that aren't good candidates for rejuvenation. You need to go out and identify what's in your yard so you can determine whether you have good candidates. And this is a great time of year to do it. What a great day today is. Too bad you guys are inside. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have another good day soon. Bear in mind that our landscapes change over time. So we have this beautiful sunny lawn and we plant our beautiful tree Then our beautiful tree grows up and now we have a shady lawn and it, we don't grow grass anymore. So you have to consider that maybe instead of buying grass seed that says it grows in the shade and dies every year, it's time to put in shade loving plants. But the other opposite result can happen. We can end up with a situation where we have a shady garden and we have to cut a tree down and suddenly we have a sunny garden. And so we might have to change the type of plants we have. And you know, just trying to say, oh, I'm gonna keep these hostas going in the full sun, might not be the best uh, uh, way to spend your days gardening. Remember, a good lawn requires four to six hours of full sun, and that's at the minimum. Anything below that, you're not going to have good results, and there is no magic grass seed. The stuff that says guaranteed to grow in the shade is not magic grass seed. It says guaranteed to grow in the shade. It doesn't say guaranteed to survive in the shade. Okay. <laughs> It will be dead by around the 4th of July or shortly thereafter, okay? There is no magic shade seed in our area, okay? It just doesn't happen. If your lawn continually looks good in May and June and looks bad in July, August, it's probably too much shade. It's time to change what you're doing.
So what's worth saving when it comes to plants? I think most plants are worth saving. Now, there could be some non-native invasives that you uh, don't like and you've been reading all the literature and you said it's time to get rid of it. You might have a plant that's just diseased continually, has a lot of insect problems and you're always spraying it and that could be a good plant to get rid of. But most plants, I think, have a consideration that they're pretty decent plants and maybe they've gotten out of control and they need to be rejuvenated. So go out, consider. I think most plants deserve a second chance.